Hey everybody, welcome to another top 5 series done by Luminous. Today I'm joined along by the originator himself, the man and I who created top 5 since the beginning of time. Ladies and gentlemen, this is 715. Hello. What's up man? Uh, having a good time doing a top 5. You don't sound like it. What? I don't... Come on man. You, you, sound, have, you, you sound like you just woke up man. No, oh, that's a lie. I woke up like 20 minutes ago. Okay, calm that's down. Right. <laughs> okay, all right. Today's top five list is gonna be the top five acceptor upgrades of all time. Well, not of all time, of of the current versions. Here's what I mean by acceptor upgrade. I don't mean like oh, Invoker getting a two second cooldown, Queen of Pain getting a forty second cooldown and some slight damage increase. Those ultimates are really good on its own, and the upgrade makes it you know slightly better. The upgrades I'm talking about is basically changing the ultimate to something vastly different. Yep, and we will have some honorable mentions in the, in the end, like talking about heroes that made it not into the list. But I think we're ready to start off with our number 5, right? Yeah, number 5 is the Viper, or the Nether Drake, if you're playing Dota 1. It reduces the cooldown to 12 seconds, and at level 3, the mana cost is uh, also reduced by 50%. It actually costs 250, it only costs 125, so that's an important fact, so you could really spam it and make uh, full use of the 12 second cooldown. Uh, the damage doesn't get increased though, it's still 145 per second, I think. And yeah. But if you're firing off two at a team fight, it, the damage has been increased. Yeah, then the damage has been increased, of course. And uh, yeah, why, why do you think it's so good? I mean, a lot of times we see Viper being picked or played mostly as a melee counter, and the fact that you could fire one off at the beginning of the team fight, and it, the range is so big that you could basically initiate too with it if you want to, and uh, you could ch pick off lagging hero because it has high amount of damage. You know what is one way that you counter melee carries? Yeah, it's it's obviously getting the ghost scepter, and uh, if there's a Viper with an X stick and you have a ghost scepter and you pop it, Viper will be just like, hey, oh, my ult is Lulz. ready anyway, so I'll just ult you and you'll take uh, insane amounts of damage. Of course, uh, I mean, it, at any stage of the game, and the slow is good, the damage is decent, BKB or not, you're getting slowed, so he's a great counter to melee care, like talked about, Nyx, he eats Nyx alive, he eats any melee heroes alive. And even some like low range range here, like uh, Morphling, Luna, like you just apply a, such a sick slow on DPS on them. It's it's really good. Yep. Uh, and well, I guess I'm gonna make one last point here, which is, you know, before Lumi said we want to talk about he heroes that become different and Viper. Well, we talked about it makes Viper a lot better at countering melees, but she's already good at countering melees. But if you have like, you have the mixed damage types in the team fight, and we think that's actually a huge deal. Like, maybe there are targets that have very high armor, and you're not doing so much damage against them, but because you're now able to deal a good amount of magic damage, it will actually turn your physical DPS carry into a physical and magical DPS carry, yeah. which can be a huge that's deal. Extremely, extremely relevant. And that's the number five, Viper's Acceptor Upgrade. And number four, another very poisonous hero, his name is Venomancer, and the Poison Nova Upgrade... Now, this might not sound like a flashy upgrade, it's just a strict damage upgrade. At level 16, without the Axe Scepter, it does about 1,200 in an AoE. If you upgrade it, you do about 1,700 in an AoE. So, strictly a 500 damage upgrade in an AoE. Yep, and that's uh, pretty much insane. And here, I also think um, Dota 2 mechanics come into play pretty well, because in Dota 1, remember, back then you could just buy by a Ghost Scepter and be like, hey, Veno out on me, I'll just remove it. This doesn't work in Dota 2. And also, uh, the Veal got introduced, yeah. which was still in Dota 1, but these two items, like Ghost Scepter not working as a counter anymore, plus the Veal amplifying the damage, like, it's just like so incredible huge damage. It won't even matter, like, if you have a pipe, it will just melt down in 4 seconds. So that's basically nothing. That's 25% of the ult's duration, because... Well, magical resistance isn't applied before the pipe barrier is reduced, so like three, like four you're getting, ticks. You're getting too mech heavy for the viewers, man. Okay, okay, so... But no, what he's trying to say is it eats through pipe, and that's a huge thing. It's, and yeah. in, it just eats everything. A lot of times we say, oh man, mech is pretty good against Venna. Well, not when this thing is around. He, he basically kills everything. Sure, it doesn't do fatal damage, but you don't need your Venna to do the fatal damage anyway. He, he just basically brings everybody so weak that whoever else just cleans up and get a whole bunch of kills uh, as a reason. Yep, it's insane skill and 
it becomes even better with the Lex Scepter, and that's why he picked it for number four. So I guess we're going to three now, and I think we had a hard time choosing there. Yeah, it, number three and number two is kind of the same, but just for the sake of having it on the actual list, let's do a go with number three, Tiny the Stone Giant. Tiny, you all know what the Acceptor does. It like it gives you the the well, it gave you the ability to pick up a tree back then. Now you will just have a tree in your large stony hands, and it will actually give you a decent cleave, which is like fifty percent splash damage. I'm not too sure about the radius, but it's pretty big. Oh. And what why we decided that Tiny becomes so good with this item is. We, I, th I think the main reason is we've seen it in many pro games already, like Tiny with Acceptor introduced, I'm not, I think Sing Sing was actually the guy introducing it back then, and then it was copied by a lot of other teams, like we saw, saw Loda Tiny many times, and these Tinies just started carrying with going face boots or sometimes trads into a Ganims and AC, like stacking a lot of attack speed on the Tiny with a Ganims, the Tiny suddenly goes from a nuker to a physical DPS carry with the ability to push very fast. So Tiny Tiny was a he was a good pusher before, but he becomes an even better pusher and he suddenly becomes a carry as soon as he picks up this again. And that's just what it even changed the meta game. Like it was it was like a flavor of the month, but it was still a huge change and it well it showed the full potential of the hero. Yeah, I mean, we see it once in a while as well. Like today I was casting a complexity game. They picked up a tiny. You talked about it's a 50% cleave in 400 AoE, which is probably like the best cleave in the actual game. Um, it also increases the attack range. I think that's a slightly known fact. And of course, Melee Hero starts out with 120 something. So it brings them close to 350. Uh, that's pretty good for Melee. And you're cleaving in the AoE. So that's insane. Also, you can't forget about the fact that it does do extra damage to building, so kind of like a demolish effect. So that that he clears creeps fast, he deals a lot of damage in a team fight, he pushes very fast. Remember those uh, games where Tiny cleans up a whole base of racks in one flat minute. Only Tiny could do something like that in a game, and like you could see the difference between the Acceptor and, and without the Acceptor, totally different hero, and that's kind of. It really embodies the spirit of this top five list, where an acceptor upgrade change you t totally to a different hero. Where you go from, like someone if I said, a AOE nuker, a ganker to a full fledged carry. It's it's a uh, it's pretty damn good, and that's only number three, man. Yep. It's only number three. So we got uh, a cute number two coming for you, which is our beloved Enchantress, because uh, <laughs> come get healed. Yeah, like Enchantress. I mean. I hope many of you guys saw saw the big game when uh, LGD played against Ehome lately. I think that was, uh, I think that was in the Gigabyte Dota Masters, the big game where it was the King J Enigma with a refresher at minute like 25, something like that, and the BKB and the Cane Boots, like the very long game. And there we actually saw like the power of Aganim's Enchantress. Like, it was incredible how the Lamb Enchantress carried Ehome like through the team fights all the time by just dealing so insane damage, while the while she was allowed to position herself very efficiently in the team fight, like always on the edge, not getting picked up by the heroes. I mean, that's like, it can be situational because if there are heroes like Storm, you will have a hard time making good use of the Ganem Scepter that gives you the range increase. But if there are not heroes with blinks or like long openings, then Enchantress again is just such a huge deal. I mean, you're already dealing big pure damage hits. I mean, I know BKB blocks it, but still, not everybody on the main team is BKB. You have so much range. You could switch from target to target. You could single out. She's basically an assassin. And the best part of this, she starts the game as your secondary support, right? Something of that nature. And then suddenly she picks up Acceptor and she becomes a full-fledged semi-carry. Like, you can't actually ignore her in a team fight. It works really well with Untouchable, considering that you get more HP, so she gets a lot tankier. It works out with Healing Attendant, considering she could survive and get the full heal. It, it is just the best of all worlds. And yeah, she becomes a carry that you can't really ignore. Yep, and we should actually mention that... Aganims was, I think it was, you can, we can just say Aganims was the reason Enchantress came back into the competitive, competitive scene back then. Because when it was introduced, like before that, there was this one time, I think we talked about it in our last top five. Solo mid. Solo mid <laughs> Enchantress with insane yeah. strength gain. Then yeah. came the big nerf, strength gain back to one, Enchantress no HP. No one was playing her because there was 
Like, the build you actually had to do when you random enchantress in a pub, you had to go for, like, Vanguard. It was the old Vanguard back then, so that was, like, more okay than it's now. And you had to get, like, Vanguard, Hood, Power Treads, then a Heart. Like, just try to stack up <laughs> HP so desperately uh, without really making anything else on your hero more efficient. But the Ganims now gives you the ability to get HP and a bigger mana pool. So And damage. And damage, so yep. that item was just... Really good, really good design for the Acceptor. Uh, yeah. Again, it's a late game threat. You never really know when she picks it up, and she when she picks it up, it's a it's a beast. Um, we actually wasn't sure whether Enchantress or Tiny should, you know, it's number three or number two. Uh, Enchantress, I, I think, you know, a range hero, so a little bit more work done in the late situation game. But you could clearly switch it up to two and three, depending how you feel. But that is not even close to the best, yes. the best Acceptor upgrade in the entire game, in our opinion is the goblin techie himself not releasing dota 2 just yet but uh trust me when he is released he's gonna be blowing a whole bunch of people up with an accept upgrade yeah the goblin techie itself i mean the the upgrade is just uh when you get it uh on techies i mean what you basically do is you know you get your soul ring and maybe the arcane boots some people like to do it some people don't and then you just try to get the ganims and when you have your ganims you actually start fighting with the techie that's like you can actually participate in the team fights because you all just got such a huge range you can do other stuff as well like you can uh, set up traps like maybe a bit outside of the ward range stuff like that and sounds like you have done that a couple of times yeah i'm not the greatest techie player but i mean i have i have played him quite sometimes and Stuff like that works actually out really well. Yeah, it really it adds a bit of a cast range. Again, that's very important. It gives you the ability to kill an entire creep wave by itself, which is extremely relevant. You basically farm so quick. How many times do you finish your egg and then like basically three minutes later, four minutes later, you finish your hex as well? I know I'm exaggerating a little bit, but you blow up a creep wave every single, t every single wave. And they do so much damage, you can easily cast it. And it really is makes him i feel like competitively viable now there's some you know sudden east asian pinoy games where the techie players there didn't get the acceptor but man this is one of the best upgrade in the game it, it just makes him such a scary hero to go against yep. i think it also increases damage yes it does from uh, 600 to 750 yeah just want to mention that so yeah, yeah and uh it increased the aoe uh, of the effect as well like it, it's just a strict increase in all throughout I think the range increase is actually the biggest yeah, one, though. The There's so many times where you'd be like, oh, yeah, man, I have a gem. I could actually do something about it now. Not when the remote mine is being dropped on you during the team fight. He could do that, too. He could drop, like, two of you in the team fight and yep. whew, big AOE damage. Yep, easy. So, yeah. So, I mean, if you drop, like, let's say you drop, like, two, two remote mines and you hit three and two heroes with each, that's, like, wow. That's, like, over 3K damage, 3.7K, I think. Pretty, pretty good. Yeah, it's decent. So yeah, that's our number one. That's It's pretty flashy, pretty explosive, but that is going to be our top five list. Now, before we end the segment, one of your uh, pet favorite hero about Acceptor Upgrade that didn't make it to the list? Oh, it's X, of course, <laughs> because uh, X is just uh, like awesome, uh, awesome hero itself, and the alt is just so good. You could, like, you could spam it. It's six second cooldown. The duration of the speed buff is six seconds. So if you start a team fight and finish off the first target you go for, then you're basically running with 25 percent increased movement speed uh, all the time. You could even alt creeps to get a little bit faster. <laughs> and I don't know. I just like cooldown incre uh, decreasing in general, like on Husker, on Clockwork. Like those are some of my favorite heroes too with Acceptor. It's it's pretty cool. Yeah, some of my favorite is the Ventral Spirit. Another cooldown uh, decrease. It, it makes her tanky. She's she's already such a good hero, and now that you get off two, even three swap in a single team fight means you're picking up a whole bunch of lagging heroes. Um, as a support player, I love uh, things like that. I played Juggernaut from uh, time to time as well, and I really loved it back in Dota One. Where you change the animation of your sword to be like mega boss awesome. In Dota 2, it doesn't you know do anything, but I still get it from time to time as a joke item. Increase your slashes. I mean, make you a little bit more survivable. So, those are those two of my favorite that are not that good. Venge is very decent, but yep. didn't and make it to the top. Uh, one last thing you might be wondering: uh, we didn't choose Chen because we decided it's too boring. I don't know. Luminous made this choice. Ask him about that. But what I want to mention right now is the panda. Like you might, guys might be surprised that we didn't choose panda. I mean. 
the upgrade is good obviously it makes the pandas even better like it increases the hp and the damage they do it also buffs the duration by i think a full six or seven seconds yep so and lower the cooldown yeah and it lowers the cooldown but you know for pandas there are sometimes also the games where you're actually i don't know i personally have mostly in pub i have panda games where i don't want to get the acceptor because they have like big dps carries and they'll just kill my three pandas and if they last last seven seven seconds longer the risk of my pandas getting killed is even higher and so i'll just die during my ult and that's i don't know for me that's what you gotta be careful about Play there you go. Said it from a former pro himself. And that's going to do it for our segment today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And of course, let us know what more top five you want to hear about. Put them topics into the description. This is Luminous and 715. We are signing off. Thanks for watching, guys. GG. <laughs>